but there are a lot of people that have a lot of money who have horrible lives. Right. Right. Because they they've sacrificed a lot of things that money can't buy in order to get the material stuff. Right. So that is important. I think I think really being honest in your metrics of whether or not your life is what you want it to be. Yeah. It has to go way beyond just what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you have or job and all that. Um, I do think, though, at the same time, one one difference uh, that my wife and I have is that uh, I kind of grew up with uh, a father that had old school values that says that as a man, there is an expectation that you can provide at a certain level mm. because that maintains structure for the family, for the household. Uh, in fact, when I wrote a book called Financial Lovemaking years ago, I, I studied and, I, and they, they, they have studies that say that even women are naturally less sexually attracted to men when they're falling off financially or they're financially irresponsible or financially incapable. Like wow. there's a biological reason why the rich, powerful, intelligent, you know, guy is, is more attractive than mm. the, the wimpy little guy that works at McDonald's and, you know, can't, can't take admit him that Right. What do you say? Women won't admit that. They though. won't admit it, but it's true. It's it just, it's they no, they know they're doing it's it. No, right, right. Right. It's right. It's subconscious. It's, it's subconscious. You don't know that you're doing it. And of course, studies show that, Men who are most likely to cheat mm -hmm. are men who make less money than their wives. Really? Yes, because wow. that's, that's their way of asserting their manhood. Interesting. I could see that. That <laughs> makes sense way, to me. None of, my, none of my rich friends cheat, honestly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like and, if, none of them. and think about the black community. There's women, black women are it. You know, they're making money, they're entrepreneurs, they're yeah. being successful. And a lot of the marriages I see, the women are doing very well and mm -hmm. the men are struggling. And those men who are struggling feel less than the, as a man. Yeah. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And of course, in therapy, we deconstruct all of those things. But that's what encourages them. They don't know that they're doing it to make them go out and cheat because there's their way of saying, I'm a man now. Yeah. They've yeah. done studies on that. Uh, women that make a high salary actually struggle dating men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah my, I mean, my, my theory on that is pretty simple, that uh, I, I think naturally a lot of women just kind of want the man to have a little bit more of whatever it is. Like, like whatever I make, I need you to make a little bit more. If you, if I'm five foot nine, I need you to be about five foot 11, <laughs> no. right? Yeah. And, and again, not, not in all cases, not in all cases, you right? You date a guy shorter than you? Hold on a second. Let me, I want to <laughs> talk about our story. Okay. Okay, so I have known boys for 30 years. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's amazing that I'm on this podcast. It's amazing that I even have a social media pr platform, right? Because I'm, you know, I'm raising children. I'm a college professor. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my thing. I am not on social media. So every time I would talk to boys to find out what's going on with him, I would just call him on the phone. Mm. It wasn't until we started dating that I followed him on Facebook. <laughs> it wasn't even your Facebook friend. I followed him on, I didn't even have an Instagram account, so I couldn't follow you on Instagram. Mm. After we started dating, now mind you, and I know Boyce does not like me sharing this story, but I'm gonna <laughs> share it. When Boyce and I started dating, yeah. his blood pressure was, can I say it? Yeah, it, 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 it was high. About? His blood pressure was <laughs> high. No, I'm telling this story. His blood pressure was high. Uh -huh. His phone was cracked. Okay. He had, a, it was in the winter time. He had a coat with a big hole in it. Mm. He lived in this really nice apartment in Chicago, but you know, it was an apartment, <laughs> you know? He had yeah. all of these things. And I was like, this poor baby, my friend, for all these years, like there was something really beautiful and gentle in that. And I'm like, you know what? What's going on? Mm. You know, his, um, his health was failing. And I did not know until after we started dating, how popular he was. Yeah. We would go places and I'm like, why are people taking your picture? Why are people <laughs> doing this? I had no idea. Wow. And I had fell in love with a man who I thought was this poor little thing. <laughs> and I had no idea he Interesting. That's probably why he stuck with you, because probably had a lot of gold diggers coming at him and stuff. I don't know yeah. what his experience was, but I've I've always the well, moment I met boys in um, the library. We met in the library oh, at Indiana cool. University. I was 19 years old. He was not Dr. Boyce Watkins. He was Boyce the um, graduate student. Mm. And when he came up to me and he talked to me, we spent how many hours together? About three or four hours. We spent nice. three or four hours together. And, and I said to myself, I was 19, I said, I found him. Wow. Found him. That is the message that came through my head. And ever since then, I have always stayed in contact with Boyce. Boyce would even say, Boyce would fall off the face of this earth. I'm calling you. You are not going to ignore me. Like, that's the type of 
relationship and friendship that I had with him for many years, I had no idea that he was even interested in me. Mm. He it, when for years after we dated, I had no boyfriend. He mm. could have tried to talk to me. I had no idea. Boys can tell his story. I had no idea he was even interested in me. 